Hey folks, I'm Steve Butler. I don't know about you, but when I'm working out in the yard or in the garden, I'm always forgetting something and I'm running back and forth to the shed. Well, today's project is going to eliminate that problem. We're making this garden cart. Come see how we do it here in the garage. All right, let's look at today's project. I'm using half inch sheathing plywood for the body of the cart. I'm using three quarter inch pine for the push bar and the handles. I love this project. We have lots of storage room for bags of soils. We have little cubbies for seeds. We have a little area to hang garden tools. We have a sliding door so nothing falls out. And our seven inch diameter wheels make this perfect to go over any type of terrain. We're using rabbit joints and dadle joints to tie this all together. The first thing we need to do is go cut our pieces of size. Yeah, this project came about essentially out of need. Uh, what I said in the beginning was very true. I was always making multiple trips back and forth to the shed because I was forgetting something and I needed a cart. Um, so this way you can put your rake, your broom in it, your garden tools, your soil, your seed, whatever you want and uh, take it all in one trip. All right, I went ahead and I cut the plywood down to more manageable sizes. Now, the first thing I did is I set the fence between the blade 11 and 3 quarter inches. We want two sides at those dimensions. Make sure you have your safety glasses on. I'm doing a lot of talking, but wear a dust mask and make sure you have hearing protection on. I'm going to turn the dust collector on and we'll go ahead and rip those side pieces to dimension. All right, the next thing we want to do is to cut our bottom piece and we're going to cut that at 15 inches. All right, next we're just going to cross cut those pieces to size. There's many reasons I love this project. Um, the first one, the most important one, is I really needed a garden cart. I'm always just carrying tools and utensils back and forth from the shed to the yard and I'm always forgetting something. So this way, one trip. I load it up and that's it. First thing I want to do is we're going to cut our two sides to 27 inches long. All right, we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. Now we just want to cut our bottom piece to 23 and a half inches long. All right, that looks great. With our off cut, we're going to cut that to size and that'll be the back of our cart. Now I'm just going to rip our back piece to 14 inches wide. All right, now we have all our pieces for our cart 
cut the size, with the exception of our back piece. Our back piece sits at 15 degrees. So I'm going to come back to that and I'll cut it later. Now we're going to rip the push bar and the handles to two and a quarter inches wide. Now we're just going to go ahead and cross cut our two handles to 41 inches long. Okay, we have our two handles cut the length. We're now just going to cut our push bar to 24 inches. Save these off cuts, we're going to use them later. All right, now we have all our parts cut the size. Our bottom and our side pieces of the cart are joined together by a rabbit joint, and the handle and the push bar are joined together by a dado joint. And I'm going to use a stack dado set on the table saw to cut those joints. But before I switch them out, I want to cut a 15 degree angle on our sides and our back piece. All right, so what I'm going to do is I've tilted the saw blade to 15 degrees, and we're going to cut our back piece and that will allow that to tilt back at 15 degrees. What I've also done, now our side pieces are 27 inches long at the top and 23 and a half inches long at the bottom and that's the length of our bottom piece. And I drew a line from 23 and a half up to the corner at 27 and I'm going to cut that off. That's actually 15 degrees. I'll tilt the saw back to 90 degrees and we'll tilt our miter gauge to 15 and cut those pieces. All right, that looks great. Just gonna tilt the blade back and cut our sides. All right, there we go. So we've cut the back to 15 degrees. You can see how that leans. And we have our sides cut to 15 degrees. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna change out the saw blades and we're gonna cut our rabbit for the bottom and our dados for the handle and the push bar. All right, I've set up our stacked dado blades in our table saw and I've set them to half an inch wide and I've raised the blade to a quarter of an inch deep that's the rabbit we want to make along the edge of our bottom piece. Now you'll notice I've set a piece of plywood. It's a sacrificial fence that I've clamped on to my regular table saw fence. I've made sure I have some clearance. They don't get in the way when we pass our wood along here. And that allows me to butt it up right to the edge of our saw blades so that I can just run this right along, turn it around, do the same thing on the other side, and we have our rabbit cuts done. All right, let's get started. Thank you. 
Okay, there we have it. We have our rabbit cuts along the edge of the bottom piece. And you can see how that's just going to fit in. Later on, we're just going to put a bead of glue in some brads, and that'll tie that in nicely. All right, the next thing, we need to cut a dado um, on our push bar to accommodate our um, handle pieces. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to use this cart for the garden necessarily. It's just a utility cart. You can use it to uh, put uh, your charcoal or briquettes in it and wheel it out to, the, to have a barbecue. Um, whatever you want, whatever you need. Uh, some, you know, it kind of reminds me of a wheelbarrow. So if you want, you could attach larger, um, bigger wheels on it and use it for a different purpose. All right. What I did is I took a measure from the end of our push bar at four inches and I drew a line and that's the start of our dado. Now we want a three quarter inch wide by three eighths deep dado. Um, instead of taking apart the dado blades and putting in another one to equal three quarters of an inch wide, I'm just going to make two passes. I've raised the blade to three eighths of an inch. That's the depth of our dado. Now, if you don't have a set of dado blades, you could use the single table saw blade and just make a bunch of multiple passes. If, if you don't even want to do that, you can use a router set up in a router table with a straight bit. All right, I'm going to turn on the dust collector again. Make sure you have your eyes on and your hearing protection. All right, that looks great. I'm just going to turn this end for end, do the same thing. All right, there we have it. We have our two dados on the push bar cut. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our handles and I'm going to measure 10 inches up from the bottom and we're going to cut a dado to accommodate our foot pad. Yeah, the joinery for this project is relatively simple. I'm using rabbit joints and dado joints. You see a lot of those used in cabinet making, um, but we use them to attach the, the body of the cart together as well as the handle and the push bar. All right, there we go. We have the rabbits cut in our bottom piece. We have all of our pieces cut for our handles and our push bar and the dados cut in that. All right, let me show you what I did. We have both our sides. We have the back of our sides cut at 15 degrees. And what I did is I just took a coffee can and just traced a line just to create a nice curve on the front. You could leave this square or you could just notch it off at 45 degrees, but I just think this nice curve gives it a nice little effect, a nice detail. So I'm just gonna bandsaw this out. Make sure you have your safety glasses on, some hearing protection. Make sure it comes up to full speed before you start. And you don't wanna go too fast, just a nice easy motion. All right, 
That looks great. Let's go to the bench and assemble the cart. All right, let me show you what I did. Sometimes you just need an extra hand. So I have a couple of spring clamps up front to hold up our sides and some couple of clamps at the back and that just makes assembly easier. I'm going to put a bead of glue on our side pieces and then we're just going to go ahead, lay our bottom down and tack it in place. You don't need a lot. You want to make sure you, you, know, you cover the joint thoroughly. You don't want to starve the joint, but the more you have on here, the more you have to clean up. So you, you need enough to do its job though. So we're just putting a fine bead down in the middle. You want to make sure you have everything you need, a mallet in case you glue the wrong parts together so you can take them apart. Cloth to wipe up any mess or excess. Now this glue sets up rather quickly, but you don't have to rush. Just take your time. And make sure you have it done, done right. All right, let me tack one in place first. before we put all the others in place. Just gonna go ahead, do the same thing here. All right, just go around, put in a few more brads. All right, that looks great. We're just gonna turn this over and put our back in. All right, now we're gonna glue in our back. Now don't forget, you have one edge that's cut at 15 degrees, and that's the edge we wanna put right against the bottom here. So what I'm gonna do, just so I don't have to mess around with this, is put a little bead of glued right there where the back is gonna hit. And then I'm going to put some on our bottom piece. And then quickly before it runs down, we're going to put some on this edge. And we're going to glue and tack this in place. So I'm just going to lift this up. Tap. And I'm just going to shoot a brad in here to get started. And we'll flush this up with the sides and just go around, tack in a few brads. All right, turn around, do the same thing on our other side. All right, there we go. Our cart is assembled, our cart body anyway. So next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and install our cubbies and then put our handle and our push bar together. All right, let me show you what I did. I went ahead and I cut our pieces needed to create our shelf or our cubby section. Now the bottom piece is cut at 15 degrees as well because that has to meet and rest against our back piece at 15 degrees. I drew a couple of lines on the sides to line this up level. And then I drew a line on the outside so I know where to shoot my brads. So I'm just gonna put a bead of glue on our back edge. And again, just take your time. You don't want a lot. You get a ton of cleanup, but you wanna make sure it does its job. You put a little on the sides, both sides. And there we go. Gonna slide this into position. Now it's hard to see sometimes with the glue, and I'll clean up any mess. All right. Push that one in place. Just do the same thing. Before I put our partitions in, I'm just going to throw a clamp on just to make sure 
the bottom piece is hitting the back securely. There we go. Now you can take a measure and space these partitions out evenly. I'm just eyeballing them. I drew a couple of lines down the back where I want them. And we're just going to put some glue on the bottom. And some on our back piece. Do the same thing on the other side. All right. So now we'll just let that sit and adhere for a little bit and we'll attach our front. All right, I took the clamps off and I attached the front. All our partitions are made, looks great. I went ahead and I cut some strips of pine, just half inch strips, and I'm just gonna go around the inside edges and attach them, glue and brad nail them in place just to help reinforce the cart. All right, I went ahead and I glued and nailed our cleats in place. With those glued in place and our partitions, our cubby glued in place, this thing is starting to be rock solid. Now, let me show you also what I did. You can see I drew a line. I measured eight inches in from the front, drew a line up, and then from that line, I drew another line to the corner of our cart. And what that does, it lines up where I want my handles to go. I also, I cut at 60 degrees. I just cut the bottom off of our handles, and you can see how that lays flush with it. And that is where we're going to place our handles. Now we have our dado for our foot. So I went ahead with the off cuts from our handle pieces. I went ahead and I made our foot pad. And I just drilled in about halfway with an inch and a half Forstner bit. And we're going to glue that in place. And what that does, when this is all done, it gives us a place to rest the, our broom handles, our rake handles, whatever. So all right, I'm going to go ahead, glue, and fix this in place. All right, that looks great. I went ahead and I glue and screwed our feet in place, as well as I glue and screwed our handles in place. Now, with, I used an inch and a half Forstner bit on our feet, and I used that same Forstner bit and drilled right through on our push bar. And what that does, it allows the handles of our brooms or our rakes to come right through and rest on our feet. So now, I'm just gonna put some glue in our dados and put this in place. All right, that looks great. Now what we're gonna do is attach our axle cleat and our wheels. All right, let me show you what I did. That line that we drew eight inches from the front of our cart and down the side, I carried that line right across the bottom and I drilled a few holes. And what that is, that is the show placement where we're gonna put our axle cleat. Now, I simply took a piece of two by three that I had left over from another project. I ripped it down to two inches. And while we had the dado blade set up earlier, I ran a groove down the middle, half an inch wide by about half an inch deep. And what that does, that's gonna accommodate our axle. And what I did also is I took a piece of two-faced tape, and that just allows me to place this on. I'm just eyeballing this. I just kind of want the same amount extending over the, the ends. We're just going to tack that on. And that allows me to turn this over. And screw it in from this side without it moving around on me. There we go. Now we have that attached. Let's go attach our axle and our wheels. All right, you can see how my axle fits in that groove. And I'm just using half inch threaded rod. I just cut it to length at 24 inches. Now, to hold it in place, I'm using these metal staples. We're just going to put a couple in there and then we'll attach our wheels.
There we go. And I'm just looking for an even amount of bar sticking out at either end. In this case, it's three inches. Okay, so I'm going to put on a couple of flat washers. And we're going to put in our wheels. Another flat washer on, and we're just going to tie it all together with a half inch nut. You can put the wheels on facing the other way. I like it this way, with the plastic sticking out a bit, gives it a little more room so it doesn't rub up against our axle cleat. All right, just tighten these up. The term recycle or repurpose materials is used so much, but in this case, it's very relevant. This whole project was made out of pieces I had left over from previous projects. Um, the three quarter inch pine I had, you know, taken from another project. The half inch plywood was taken from another project. The only thing I had to buy was the threaded rod for the axle and the, the, the wheels. A simple piece of angle iron acts as a great support to the cart. We have our partitions here, our cubbies made to hold our seeds in place. We've attached our leather pieces to act as stirrups to hold our broom or rake poles in place. Here, we've attached the leather for tool handles. Now, you could leave this open. I made a door for this one as well. I think that works great. All right, if you're keeping this in the shed, you can leave it unfinished. I think I'm gonna paint this one the color of my old tractor. There you have it. As usual, I had a blast building this project with you. I hope you come back, see us here in the garage. Let you know I'm doing just fine But hey, hey, I'm doing fine Out here on the road As long as I have friends to call I'm never alone how take You can use something No, stop, stop, stop Where, who, where'd Steve go? What's going on?